Okay, hello everyone, my name's Henry and welcome to another video. So here we are in really, 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 really old Mac, also known as Mac OS 10.6.8 or Snow Leopard, the second version of Mac OS to not run on PowerPC, it was like the first second Intel version of Mac. Um, the reason I'm in here, it's, uh, don't worry, I'm not actually recording this off of an ancient old Mac. I don't have one. Uh, it's actually the server version running in Parallels. Parallels won't even let you run uh, the normal version. You have to run the server version. So, the reason I'm doing that, sorry about any background noise, it's not intentional. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because today we're going to be doing something that I promised when I did my Macromedia or Adobe Fireworks video, Is It Still Relevant? We're going to be doing the same for a little bit more of, um, I don't know what how to say it, but kind of a, a bit of a more different program. We're taking a look at Adobe, or that's what it's called now, but it used to be called Macromedia Freehand, and that's what most people refer to it as. The problem is, um, if you run on Windows, it'll run on pretty much anything, because of Windows and well-known backwards compatibility with anything, as long as it's today, it's a 32-bit program. If it's 16-bit, of course, it doesn't work, but... So do a bit and I'll easily run in like Windows 10. I even tried um, freehand because I was almost about to give up. But it won't run in Mac because it was a PowerPC program and there is no Intel version made. Um, however, I didn't want to give up so I ended up installing uh, Snow Leopard. I could also have done Leopard but it's easier to find uh, Snow Leopard. So I installed that. Um, which, again, that's also an Intel OS. I just said that. But it has the Rosetta compatibility layer it's Leopard and Snow Leopard that are the last two OS's to support Rosetta, which allows you to run uh, old, like, uh, PowerPC applications in Intel, on Intel processors. Although, process, like, it's really shit. Like, it doesn't really do work well. It's got a lot of issues, but it's, it's good enough for this video. And it was a lot of work to make this work, as apparently... Snow Leopard does not run well with fireworks if you just install it. So I had to go through a lot of trouble to get a registration from all that. I almost gave up, which was why I'm moving on to Windows. But then I gave it a last shot and it worked. So if you absolutely have to run freehand on a Mac, just emulate Windows instead of emulating Mac. Because this was way too complicated. I just kind of wanted to stay in tune with the whole Mac thing. And I'm not to be used to emulating Mac, so I kind of wanted to experiment with it. With that said, as you can see, I've got Freehand MX, which was the last released version of Adobe or Macromedia Freehand um, release, so I thought it would be fitting to do the last one. Uh, there will be a download link in the description. It's available for free online, and I do believe, similar to what I did in my free CS2 um, download video, Adobe no longer have the activation service online, so they have essentially released serial numbers that you can use for most of these programs without like any issues though they do expect you to actually having owned the software previously to use the codes so do that in your own at your own risk and i won't be leaving links for that because it's not really a tutorial it's more of a look at the software but if you're interested search it up on google it's a pretty quick search with that said let's go ahead and open up freehand mx as i said i'm running this uh emulated so we might discover some weird issues uh, for those screws about how I'm emulating it, I'm using Parallels, the desktop, I believe it's 12. Yeah, 12 should be the last version. So you'll notice we've got this kind of standard Adobe and, of course, also Macromedia sort of a modular look where there's no background. The Windows version does have, but uh, this one doesn't. And there's no way to enable application frame like you can in some of these. There is no application frame, at least not as far as I'm concerned. They're aware, I know this is on view. No. It's just not there. Uh, oh, whoops, sorry about that. I'm running this full screen. Let's go and run about freehand, and uh, we've got some information. I've always liked the color scheme of freehand. So, you know, Macromedia freehand, and okay, that's the credits. Um, license expires, never. So, a little bit of history about Adobe or Macromedia freehand. I can't get used to that. So, again, I talked about Macromedia last time and how they created fireworks and that they were purchased by Adobe. Now, Freehand has a lot more of an interesting story where it was first created by a company called Altsys, who then licensed it over to a company called Aldus, who was the creators of PageMaker, which is what InDesign sort of was based off of in a sense. 
Now, Adobe, being the big company, bought all this and any program that they owned. The problem was, I believe it was the Federal Trade Commission that actually stepped in and said, hey, no, you have Illustrator. You can't have Freehand too. So while Adobe did get PageMaker and a couple of other programs from Aldous, the one program they were not allowed to have was Freehand, mainly because Illustrator was the one competing product to Freehand. So they were forced to give it back to Aldous, and then, I believe it wasn't even much later, Macromedia, again the rival to Adobe, decided to purchase Aldous and thus Freehand, and then they kept on updating it all the way until 2005 with the current version of Freehand, uh, I think a police car just drove by. Fascinating. Uh, so essentially, Macromedia bought it, uh, and they updated it all the way until 2005 when Adobe purchased or like acquired Macromedia and all their programs. And this time, they actually got to keep Freehand. There was only one problem. They decided not to need it, because Illustrator had gotten past Freehand in their eyes, so... They never updated freehand, they kept supporting it, and they still have the community forums up, and people are still regularly checking it for answers and similar, and there has built up a big community of freehand. There are still professional artists using freehand today, and you can check that out on the link in the description for the download, it is from the freehandforum.org website, which is this huge bunch of people who still use freehand and uh, actively support it. So if you're planning to use freehand for anything, uh, because it is a really good um, Illustrator alternative, like a vector application, although not as easy to use on Mac as it is on Windows. So just use it on Windows. Even emulate Windows if you have to. Don't 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 emulate Snow Leopard. It's hard, not easy. It's just finicky. So essentially, uh, the Freehand Forum even filed a lawsuit against Adobe to get them to make freehand open source but unfortunately because of internal reasons that they're not allowed to disclose they weren't able to but the freehand forum people are able to give the illustrator team direct suggestions for how to make illustrator better and function similar to freehand now i haven't put myself that deep into it that i know specifically what makes people prefer freehand over illustrator uh, but if you can probably read that up yourself on the freehand forums if you're particularly interested. Now with all my probably like five minute, maybe more rambling about this, let's go ahead and actually open up freehand MX. Or we've already opened it up, but let's make a new document. And there we go. So now we've got sort of a kind of a application frame. We're going to go ahead and make sure that maximized. Though. Okay. So... You'll notice here we've got a lot of similar tools to Illustrator. I wish I had Illustrator open right now, but then again, you've probably seen that program. So, you know, we'll, we have the pen tool. Uh, we can also change it to the Bezigon tool. Again, I haven't ever used freehand before. I've heard about it, I've talked about it, but I've never used it. I know, like, you've got Arc Tool and Spiral Tool, which is something we don't directly have in Illustrator. I know Inkscape, which is a free and open source alternative to both Illustrator and freehand does have that but um and I, I notice a lot of similarities between this and uh, inkscape actually which would make sense because i believe a lot of freehand users were a part of making inkscape so that would make sense so you know let's just let's just make something i'm not the best at illustrator <laughs> i just kind of know the basics so you now let's go ahead and make like a you know the pen tool works like a pen tool should you know you could say it that way so now i've got i've got a nice shape here uh, I assume there's no paint bucket, like no direct paint bucket. Uh, but we haven't got colors. I can like change this to blue and then I'll change the fill color to be red. There we go. That works pretty similar to Illustrator in my opinion. Again, Macromedia tried to compete with Illustrator and it did. It did really well at competing with Illustrator. Adobe hated freehand because it was so... Bad. And when they finally managed to acquire it, it wasn't bad, but look, it was such a good competitor. And when they finally acquired it, they didn't even care to do anything with it. They just left it to die. And um, uh, in the end, it was just frustrated, frustrating for both Adobe and freehand users. Some of them, again, have still not gone over to, f to uh, Illustrator because it just doesn't fit their needs. And I fully respect that. Although I personally just use Illustrator. You can also draw... Uh, with a pen, like a actual pen, not a or not a pen, but a pencil. Uh, pretty pretty similar to Illustrator, really. Um, 
Now, Freehand, again, it's... I find Freehand to be a really cool program, and uh, there are, again, the website I mentioned has a lot of cool stuff that people have made with it. Uh, and the cool thing is you can actually publish as HTML, which I believe this program did before Illustrator had any sort of web capabilities, like easy web exportion options. And, and even today, they're still improving upon that concept. Probably better than what? Is this supposed to be an eraser? <laughs> okay. We also got the perspective tool, which uh, not honestly sure how it works, but uh, 3D rotation tool even. Oh, that's cool. That's useful to make it like packages and stuff. This is a extrude. So I can like, oh, that's that's really cool. You know, I know I know Illustrator has like that sort of a feature, but it's not. That's like in the menus up here. You have to go for this. This actually has tools for doing it. That's that's cool. I like that. You can also trace, apparently with a pencil. I wish I had an image ready to trace with to test it. Uh, action tool, I don't know what most of this does. Uh, I'm assuming, how does this, okay, it's a selection-based zoom. And then, we, okay, that does not zoom it out, okay. Let's go ahead and uh, set this to, I assume command zero, we'll still, yeah, command zero is still a thing, <laughs> or was a thing back then. Um, you can also have page rulers show yeah awesome and and then there's of course the extras system which is essentially what we today refer to as plugins but back then macromedia wanted to be a little bit more stylish about what they called it so they called it extras and uh, there's a lot of free ones of those as well most of the ones that were really popular back in the day have been made freeware now because really the few people who had an interest have bought them and you're not going to make a lot of money on an extras plugin today. So them being free words is awesome in my opinion. And uh, God damn it. <laughs> anyway, I just think it, uh, I just think it works out. You can also apparently make movies. As in videos. Swatches. There's swatches. I think I just disabled swatches. <laughs> Great job. Yeah, there we go. There's the swatches. This one's actually more similar to InDesign Swatches panel than it is to uh, Illustrator's one. Cool. Uh, but yeah, once again, run this in Windows, not in Mac. This was way too much work for, honestly, a little bit too little for it to actually be worth it. But then again, that is up for you to decide. Um, if a lot of you guys want me to actually make a video on doing this, like, all the way from installing Mac OS X server into Parallels and then installing Macromedia freehand and then also fixing it so it'll run. Feel free to tell me in the comments and I'll make a video on that in the future. But for now, I do not want to mess with that again. Because it is difficult. For those queries, yes. In theory, you should be able to install the Creative Suite 2 in here and run the free stuff and... Parallels? Come on. I'm, I'm making a video here. Uh, it should be able to, um, you should be able to install the entire CS2 by just kind of following my, the tutorial I did last, the, my Windows tutorial on that. Just change up a couple of things to like make it download the Mac version, use the Mac serials, but other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Now that is actually all I had to talk about today, uh, in this video. Uh, I do have another extension showcase coming up in the coming days, like either well, it's either today or tomorrow or Monday, um, where I'll be, I'm not going to spoil it, but it's going to be a Photoshop extension again, not another InDesign one, unfortunately. Hopefully there'll be more of those in the future and also an Illustrator one. Uh, so, you know, stay tuned for that. All right, thank you for watching. If you're interested in watching my video on Macromedia uh, Fireworks, then there's a link on screen right now. And if you haven't subscribed already, I'd recommend you do so to stay tuned to my content. Thank you for watching the video.